if you get asked that, you should add on to it because that's what really sets you apart from other candidates. Hey guys, if you don't know me, my name is Anjali and I'm studying computer science at the University of Waterloo. Now, I know that university applications are right around the corner. And if you're in grade 12, you probably have so many questions like, how does the process work? Or what do I put on my AIF? What is an AIF? Or even how should my marks look like? And so since I just finished my first term in university, I thought that I would give back and just answer those questions I also had in grade 12. So without further ado, let's get into this video. And if you do like this video, leave a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Also, a side note, this video is specifically for computer science at Waterloo. So if you have any questions about any other programs, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I've also got into math slash BBA, the double degree, AFM, Western IV. So you, if you have any questions at all about those programs, just leave them in the comments. Okay, now let's actually get into the video. All right, so the really big question, what did my marks look like? So before I actually show you my marks, um, we're just going to go look at Waterloo's website and see what they expect from each of their candidates. So here you can see Waterloo's website and you can see that it says individual selection from the low 90s. And this is completely true. If you're applying to computer science at the University of Waterloo, you want to make sure that you're competitive and you have an average within the 90s because this program is super competitive. Um, in terms of required courses, you can see you need advanced functions calculus and vectors, a grade 12 English, and any other for you course. So make sure you have those courses. Uh, university does look at your top six. So just try to get them in your top six because they're going to look at those anyways. Okay, so my marks. Um, I'm just going to put my marks all up here, right, for you to see. And you can see that I have my marks in the high 90s. But you have to remember, just because you do not have marks in the 90s does not mean you can't get in. I know people who have gotten in with high 80s, but here's the catch. They did really well on their AIF. They had a very strong AIF. So make sure you do well on that because Waterloo really weighs that heavily. And similarly, just because you have high marks, that does not mean you get lazy on the AIF. So you have to have both components. Okay, so speaking about the AIF, let's get into that now. Okay, so I know I said AIF probably a million times now, but I still have not explained what it is. So AIF stands for the Admission Information Form. And basically what this is, is your whole application. All right, so back to where I was. The AIF is really just a place for you to brag and sell yourself. And when I say brag, I really mean it. You want to brag. It's basically a place for you to list down all your extracurriculars, answer a few questions, and really show what you can contribute to the Waterloo community. Now, when you first open up your AIF, you'll probably see a place for you to list down all your ECs, so make sure you list down every single one. Now, if you're curious about the extracurriculars I had, I did actually start my own nonprofit organization where we donated handed blankets to animals. I was part of my swimming team. I was also the vice president of our DECA chapter, and I was also part of Model United Nations. I also had um, other ECs, but these were the main ones that I um, felt really um, influenced my application. Now, when you're actually answering those questions, there's something you really want to keep in mind, which is you do not want to emphasize how good your extracurricular is, but you want to show your learning outcomes and your growth and just how you manage to solve a task or a conflict. And one acronym that really helps me with this is called the STAR method. 
And um, so it stands for your situation, the task, your action, and your results. So for example, instead of talking about how purple pearlers um, helped these many animals, I'm going to talk about how we had a situation when I was putting this um, organization together. The task I did to overcome it, the actions um, our whole team did, and then the results. And so that's what I'm going to do instead of just talking about, oh, this organization helps animals, so it's great, you know? So that's one thing you also want to keep in mind. Another thing is that you do not want to leave questions blank on your AIF. There's probably going to be questions. Actually, there will be questions asking, do you want to add on to something? Or do you have anything else to say? If you get asked that, you should add on to it because that's what really sets you apart from other candidates. Most people will leave that space blank, but it's an opportunity for you to be more passionate about whatever you do, if it's extracurriculars or any other activity. So I usually use this to talk about my nonprofit organization or even how I um, raised money for a type of cancer. So I usually use those places to talk about those um, accomplishments I was proud of. Finally, the last section really for your AIF is the Waterloo um, math contests and the um, computing competitions. So personally, I never really did any computing competitions, but I did do the Waterloo math contest ever since uh, grade nine. And I would really recommend you do these math contests because Waterloo actually does take them into consideration. In fact, they do ask you for their marks. Specifically, um, it would be really important for you all to do the Euclid math competition. So make sure you have those Waterloo math competitions under your belt. And even if you do not do well, I honestly did not do that well in any of them. It's okay. Um, just make sure you have them and just show you're dedicated and you're always trying. So yeah, those would be my main tips for your AIF. Okay, now finally, to end off this video, I decided that I would do a little FAQ section to just answer some questions you guys all posted on the poll on my Instagram story. I'll try to get to as much as I can. And then if I do miss any and you still have more questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. So I have all the questions here with me. And so the first question is, um, does Waterloo have a requirement for how many programs you can apply to? Um, there is a requirement actually, like in general, um, you can only really apply to three programs, which is why I only apply to computer science, AFM, and the double degree math slash BBA. Uh, it, it actually does differ for um, engineering. I'm pretty sure um, for engineering, that specific department, you can only really apply to one and then one backup, but don't quote me on that. But to answer your question, you can only apply to three programs other than engineering. And now the second question is, are summer school courses weighed lower than others? This is actually a very good question. Um, whenever I used to go to the university fairs, I would always get mixed answers for this, but to answer your question, it really depends on the university. In terms of Waterloo, I would say just don't do any of the required courses in summer school. Really try to get them in your academic term, so your day school. Um, but yeah, if you have to, um, there is a section in the AIF which lets you express or explain why you had to take that specific course in summer school. Um, for me in particular, I was in the IB program and so we didn't have that much freedom when picking um, courses. And so I took data management, which is a require, um, recommended course, sorry, for um, AFM and I explained why I couldn't take it in um, regular school. So if you do have to take it in summer school, just make sure you have a good reason why and just explain that in your AIF. Okay, the next question is, do I need experience in CS to apply? Absolutely not. You do not need any experience in computer science to apply to a computer science program. Um, in fact, like your first year is mostly just like, like maths and then they gradually teach you computer science. So like, no, you do not need any computer science experience, but 
um, keep in mind that the people that you are competing against or that are with you will probably have a lot of experience. And so take the summer to actually learn some languages, try out Python, um, just try to get um, in the same boat as um, the others. But don't like freak out about it. Like I personally did not have any experience before I started this program, but I think this program does teach you a lot and um, you do actually have to take the time like by yourself to learn languages as well. Okay, next question. I kind of answered this question a little bit, but am I screwed if my average is below uh, 95? Um, no, not exactly. But again, as I said, if you do not think you have the most competitive average, really try to um, put a lot of effort into your AIF because Waterloo, again, does weigh the AIF heavily. So if you can really have an outstanding AIF that's super exceptional or whatever, um, you do have a chance. Just make, try to get your average up there as well so you're more competitive. Ooh, okay, how does the OUAC process work? Okay, so um, in general, what's gonna happen is you have to go on OUAC and then you're probably just going to list out all the programs you want, put them in your cart and pay for them. And once you pay for them, OUAC then sends your information to the universities that you apply to. So OUAC is kind of like the middleman in here. And so once that happens, uh, your university gets your information and then they send their application personally to you from whatever email you gave them. So you send your information to OUAC, OUAC gives the information to the university and the university um, sends you their application, not through OUAC. So that's the whole process. Um, you'll probably figure it out as you um, go on, apply to so many programs. Another thing is, it's something that freaked me out a little bit, is that um, when you apply, um, they'll probably like, close your OUAC account for two or three days just to process, but then it'll come back. So you don't have to apply to all of the universities at once. Um, you'll have, like, you can keep applying until uh, the due date, which I believe is sometime in January. Okay, I'll do one last question, which is when do we hear back and what are early acceptances? Okay, so I know there is this whole misconception about early acceptances, but basically what they are is um, just the university, you hearing back from the university a little bit earlier than others, um, possibly like within May or April, like before those months. But um, basically, if you just hand in your application earlier, the university gets your application earlier. And so they can decide that if you're a worthy candidate, if you meet all the criteria, they'll just send you an offer. And so that's basically what early acceptances are. But um, do not worry if you do not get an early acceptance. Like Waterloo t usually does not tend to do early acceptances. You'll probably hear from them. Um, like March or April or after those months. Uh, but yeah, I actually heard from Waterloo, I think, in March. So yeah, just don't worry about that. And um, other than that, you usually, like, usually universities actually send you um, acceptances within May, June, sometime that time, which is like the final rounds, I guess you could say. So yeah, those are all the questions. Um, there's more and um, there are more, but if I'd not get to your question, just make sure you put it down in the comments and I'll make sure to answer that. But before I leave off, I just wanna say, I know this whole process is scary. It's intimidating. You have been working through your whole high school years to get to uni into university and like, don't worry, you will just try your best. Make sure you really work hard into those applications. Treat it as another course, probably something you've already heard. And just don't beat yourself if you don't get like whatever you want. Make like just remember there's a path for you, blah blah blah. You've probably heard all that. So just don't stress yourself. Easier said than done. But yeah, just try your best and just keep in mind that things will work out. Okay, I'm going to leave you all there. And again, any questions, make sure you put them down in the comments. Bye.